Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day and a good May so far. May is definitely up there in my list of top 12 favourite months. Just watching the leaves on the trees come out, seeing the lambs in the field and the smell of SPF 50 in the air uh, really brightens my mood every year. With the recent spell of sunshine we've been having, I thought it would be nice to take Junior round to my parents' house and let her outside with their two cats, Smokey and Harry. Because I don't have a garden at my tiny house and because I wasn't sure if Junior was trustworthy enough, she'd never actually been outside before. I wasn't sure if she'd go off her head and run away, so because of that I initially put a little lead on her, but she did not enjoy it one bit. So once she got outside and she did seem quite calm, I ended up taking the lead off and just kept a close eye on her and so did Harry. He's actually got a little house that he uses as a lookout tower, so we were all in safe hands. Well, pause. I should mention I'd been on a good run of posting a video every weekend for a little while there, but I decided to take last weekend off because my brother was home for the first time in a little while and I don't see him all that often, so I decided to just hang out with him last weekend. We watched Gladiator and also watched the UFC together, just some good, wholesome, violent quality time together. Speaking of which, I've jokingly mentioned a few times that I do cage fighting and apparently a lot of people believed that and ended up searching for it. So much so that when you search my name on YouTube or Google, the autocomplete words that come up after my name are tiny house, net worth and cage fighting. Well, I can tell you right now if I tried cage fighting it would not end well for me. I'd get punched clean out of my shorts. Coming back to cats and gardens, I've been spending a lot of time in the garden at the new place recently just kind of tidying it up. I'd quite like to make a big catio over there for Junior so that she can go outside safely but also not terrorise the local wildlife. I read a stat earlier today that said household cats in the UK kill an estimated 275 million prey a year of which 55 million are birds so I don't want her contributing to that and I also just don't really want her bringing in dead animals. Recently I've become quite concerned that I'm at risk of being sued by Disney because my little profile picture icon is this copyrighted image of James from James and the Giant Peach. To remedy this I decided to hire a selection of illustrators from Fiverr.com to see what they could make for me. I thought it would be cool to show you all their creations and then you can say what your favourite one is and then whatever one ends up getting the most votes I'll end up using for my YouTube banner image. So the first person I hired was Julia to create a unique flat illustration for $65 and this wholesome patterned background was what she came up with. The next person I hired was a watercolorist called Anastasia and for $65 again she actually delivered three different final images which included me, Junior and some plants at either side of the banner. Of the three I think that this third one is probably my favourite. The third person I hired was Melinda who for $80 drew this banner image of me and Junior hiking in some mountainous scenery. And the fourth most expensive person I hired was Pintal who for $155 designed this minimal vintage illustration of me and Junior. Here are all of the designs together. Let me know what one is your favourite. Personally I like Julia's and the third illustration by Anastasia the best. If you want to hire any of these artists to create an illustration for you, I'll drop their links in the video description below. And if you'd like to get 10% off any order on Fiverr, you can use code GEORGE10 at checkout. Thanks to all the artists for their work and thank you to Fiverr for sponsoring today's video. As I said earlier, I've been spending a bit of time in the garden around at the new place recently just trying to tidy it up a little bit. I'm trying to go around every morning just for half an hour or so but I'm not really in a rush to clear it very quickly. There was a big old compost bin that we didn't need so I decided to fashion it into a makeshift bin to collect the rubbish 
that seems to have gathered up in this corner over the years. For example, I found this old satellite dish just sitting in the hedge. I'm doing most of this work with my dad and the plan is to put a new shed in this corner or maybe a little greenhouse and also cut the hedge back a bit more because it's still quite overgrown. The old shed that was here previously had some big sleepers under it but they were too heavy to shift in that state so I decided to pull them out and then got my dad to give me a chainsaw lesson. That's good though, what you're doing. So you've done it halfway through. The saw's not that sharp, I'm afraid, because it should be biting much better, but it'll do. If you didn't catch what my dad said there, I was sort of doing a sawing motion with the chainsaw, which you're not really meant to do. You're just meant to guide it through, and the chainsaw will do the work for you. What you can do is, you can go through it a bit on this side and then flip it again. I think there are another couple of sleepers wedged into the grass below, but I was sort of overheating by this point and decided to call it a day. Also, I should say the chainsaw was a bit blunt, so it wasn't cutting as smoothly as it should, just in case there are any chainsaw experts out there who are about to roast me in the comments. The next job, which I'm not going to do through fear of giving myself a knobectomy, is to cut through this massive pile of dried branches with the chainsaw. I'm going to leave that one to my dad. Back when he was in his 20s, he used to work in the forest cutting down trees, so I'm confident he'll be able to do this without losing any fingers or worse. For a quick update about the renovation, the bat inspector came out this week and did a proper survey and thankfully he found no bats. As you'll see in a second, there are a few holes and tiles on the roof which have potential for bat roosts, so I'm glad they didn't end up being a problem. Hopefully with this survey done, plan and permission will be granted and the renovation work can properly start. So I'll keep you all updated on that process. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you taking a second to leave a like and subscribing for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.